they come up with such good little intro songs for this group, this company. Very different style. Uh, little Inferno was so dramatic and impactful and big full soundscape. This one's like silly and cheery, but it's immediately catchy too. So here's a game I haven't played before. The third, the third game from this group of people or second or whatever. I think technically World of Goo was 2D Boy and Human Resource Machine and Little Inferno are Tomorrow Corporation, which is technically different people, I suppose. Although, well, at least one or two of the people was on all of those teams and that's where the visual aesthetic and theming comes from. So this is another Patreon requested one. This is requested by Jason Waite. Ah. I was just clicking back into the windows, that startled me. Please, yes, please select your employee ID. So I've never played this game before. I've had a code for it for a while and I was planning on covering it for a while and I, I'm happy to finally get to that because I feel guilty, of course. Uh, one of the things that held me back a little bit was just the idea of that it's it's less a traditional puzzle game and more a, what a, it's a member of a genre called visual programming games, which is games where you sort of create essentially a program to solve a problem. So instead of having a, a actual a literal solution or a number of different solutions. You're basically just given tools you can use to solve a problem. A bit like Factorio, but Factorio has more like video gamey, like health and resource management elements and uh, overall goal and multiplayer and uh, world theming and stuff that make it feel a little more video gamey. Whereas I'm often, af I'm often a little afraid to cover these visual programming games, partly because they're super long in many cases at least, I don't know about this one specifically, and partly because I don't know how fun it is necessarily to watch me just try to come up with stuff on the fly while doing commentary on solving a problem necessarily. Uh, but if I ever do do a full series on one, it's probably going to be Space Chem or Infinifactory one of these days, because those all those Zactronic games are always appealing looking. I have your photo here somewhere. Which one is yours? Sure, I'll be the little blue man. Yes, that photo looks just like you. Here's your badge. Please proceed to the elevator. The mail room. Welcome, employees. Judging by the last two games, I'm sure this game will have a very positive uh, impression on any, well, everything, really. Welcome to your first day. You look like an excellent instruction follower. Your first job will appear over there on the right side in a moment. Um, isn't in my jobs, it's left side, or I guess it's to my right, I guess, I don't know. Remember, you can always ask me for help. Oh, this is the right side, I guess. Alright. Inbox, outbox. Drag commands into this area to build a program. Your program should tell your pro worker to grab each thing from the inbox and drop it in the outbox. Okay, inbox. Outbox. Go. Does that work? Not enough stuff in the outbox. Management expected a total of three items, not one. Oh no. Turns out I'm bad at following directions. I need to put these in here three times, apparently. Look at him go. Let's speed him up a bit. There we go. First floor done. Was that? Th is that that? Your presence is requested on the next floor. Is that that one, like, audience of children screaming stock sound? I think it was. The busy mail room. Alright, what's going on here? Year two. Oh my god, how long have I been here? Well, it looks like you've made it this far. Okay. Congratulations on your promotion. Most people stress out and quit before making it this far. But I can tell you have a bright future in out inbox outbox management. Here's your new assignment. Alright. Grab each thing in the inbox and drop each one into the outbox. You get a new command. You can drag jumps arrow to jump to different lines of your program. With this ability, you can complete this assignment using only three commands. So, j j inbox, outbox, jump. Voop. There we go. Should be able to do the entire thing with just that. There we go. So that causes things to work the way that I thought it would the first time. And all we have to do is that for a whole year. Congratulations. All right, this guy's having a great life so far. Copy floor. Oh no. 
the inbox conveyor system is broken, is completely broken. But that doesn't mean we can, uh, we get to take a break off of work. Ignore the inbox for now, and just send the following three letters to the outbox, B-U-G. The facilities management staff has placed some items over there on the carpet for you. If only there was a way you could pick them up. Okay. Uh... B... No. Copy from... B... Outbox. Copy from... U. Outbox. Copy from... G. Outbox. Go at it. Yeah. That's not backwards, is it? Cool. So far, pretty straightforward. Scrambler handler. This is how long- so the- in universe, this is year four, so this is a, exactly as long as high school is what, I've, is what I've been doing so far. The conveyor system is fixed, it only took a year. And just in time for you to get to work. The data won't co uh, collate itself. Grab the first two things from the inbox and drop them into the outbox in reverse order. Repeat until the inbox is empty. Going to reverse the order of the first two things. Okay. Got a new command. Feel free to use copy two wherever you like, uh, wherever you like on the carpet. It'll be clean later. Okay, so inbox copy two zero inbox copy two one. Copy from zero outbox. Copy from oopsie one. Oh, wait. Meh, 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 meh. All right. So grab the first thing, put it in zero. Grab the second thing, put it in outbox. Then. Go to zero, and go to outbox, then jump back to the beginning. That should be a self-fixing problem, right? Nope. Nope. I should not have done fast forward, considering I didn't know what was, was going to happen. What? I'm sorry, excuse me? Was that good? Wait, he just... Ah! Wait. Uh. Uh. Okay. I actually did do it correctly. I noticed that one- I noticed he wasn't picking up whatever was in zero, so I thought I messed it up, but I actually did it perfectly. It's just that I thought he would go get the thing on the floor. Yeah, he only copies. He doesn't pick things up. I don't have- a, I don't think I even have a command unless you pick things up off the floor. Just the inbox. Ooh, a split path. That leads to a dead end, evidently. Alright. A to B equals C. Welcome, employees. Ooh. Fibonacci visitor. What? What does that mean? Ooh. It goes for a little while. Coffee time! What's gonna happen here? A whole year of coffee time? <laughs> Back to work, everyone! Regions of the city continue to experience power failure. Local authorities are investigating. So we're getting our first hint of this idea that we're churning away at this job where who knows if what we're doing even serves a purpose or anything, and outside, in the distance, there's hints of strife in the outside world. Uh, welcome to my personal rain cloud. 
I was never very good at math, since I have only three fingers in each hand. But I uh, hear you don't actually need to know very much about math to complete these assignments. Hello again. Uh, oh, it just repeats. Tell me more. Do a good job. Our careers depend on this. Was that always there? Give me an example. No, it's probably a tutorial. For each of two things in the inbox, add them together and put them result in the outbox. You got a new command. It adds the contents of a tile on the floor whenever uh, to whatever value you're currently holding. Okay, so inbox copy to zero. Inbox copy to one. After last mission, I now better understand what copy to and copy from, from mean exactly. Uh, now we add zero and No, you don't add two things? Okay. Let's get rid of copy to, to, to one then. So, take, take one thing, copy it to zero, take a second thing, then add zero to it. And put the result in the add box. And then loop. I think that's it. He just throws it away. Yeah, he did it. There we go. Get it? He's a human resource machine. He's a human re- it's- it's-, it's the hum- The humanity is the resource here. It's like- it's like a weird world where we developed all the logic of programming, but not programming or computers. So just poor, sad people have to do all the work to get themselves. This appears to be some kind of dead end or something, and that appears to be forward progress. Weird- oh, they're numbered weird. Oh, that messes with my brain. Inherently, I want to go down the dead end first and check that out, but over here, there's clearly a number here. So I guess I'll do them in numeric order. Zero exterminator. Where do you see yourself in five years? Or ten years? I have a note here from your other boss that says, From this point on, your performance will be evaluated with extra scrutiny. What a treat! Send all things that are not zero to the outbox. You got a new command. It jumps only if the value you were holding is zero. Otherwise, it continues to the line. Okay. Huh. Tend to all things that are not zero to the outbox. Okay. I guess if I just- what should I do though? Because I don't have a- I don't have a trash function in this game. Putting stuff down on the floor is a copy function. It doesn't get rid of what's in my hand. If I just pick up another thing from the inbox, I guess that might lead to me... Yeah. Okay, so grab something from the inbox. And then if it's zero, go back to the inbox and pick up another thing. Otherwise, go to the out box and then loop again. Does that work? So four, go to outbox, good. Zero, yeah. Eight, go to the outbox. I think I did it. Okay. What was, what was I supposed to, what, they supposed They gave me so much floor space. Ooh, use four or fewer commands. Oh. These challenges can be very difficult. In many cases, not possible to optimize both simultaneously with one solution. I just did optimization, so they must have expected me to do something else. I think I might have just come up with the more clever solution for the puzzle. Interesting. Alright, triple room. Who are you? This optional area is for high-performing employees only. Is that you? Well, you're late. Seven years late. We need to make some changes around here. I want to see a 100% performance increase. From this point on, your performance will be evaluated with extra scrutiny. Okay. For each thing in the inbox, triple it. And outbox the result. Self-improvement tip. Where are we going with this? Please leave the high-level decisions to management. <laughs> uh... Triple it. Okay. So, inbox... Copy to zero. Add... Zero. Add... Zero. 
So you'll have you'll have zero. You'll have what's in what in your hand right now. You'll copy it to here. So you still have times one in your hand. Then you add it twice. Now it's times three. Now out box, and then go back to the beginning. Right. Right. Four. Eight. Twelve. Out box should be good to go. He looks like he's doing a little cheerleading dance. All right, how about those judgments? Yeah, six or fewer commands. Oh, damn. Apparently I nailed it. All right, zero preservation initiative. Per preser preservation? Preservation. Preserved. It has come to our attention that the zero advocacy, advocacy, I, I, why is enunciation of the syllables a problem for me today? That the zero advocacy community felt the previous assignment was not inclusive. This time, send only the zeros to the outbox. Oh, they're, they're, they're an advocacy unit for the number zero. Okay. What happens to the other numbers and letters? Management leaves that detail up to you. Okay. Oh, right, my jump, I was gonna say, don't I just make the same equation then? But no, the jump if zero thing only happens if zero. Okay, so... Hmm. Inbox. So only send the zeros. Huh. Should I just immediately loop back to inbox, basically? Like, keep looping forever? But if it's a zero... I could jump past that... to outbox... and then jump back to the beginning. That- that might work, it's pr Empty value! If you can't, you can't jump if zero with empty hands. Um. Oh, you can't jump forward from there. I guess that makes more sense, actually, is to jump to there. Right. I think that fixed it. <laughs> Fuck that item. <laughs> I think this works, but it might not be a very efficient solution. Because it looks like a weird spaghetti mess. Five or fewer commands. Oh, okay, apparently that was efficient. Wow. No! I've made a mistake. It, 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 it takes too many steps. Oh well. I still want to keep going. Octoplier Suite. Yes, you can always check your own performance on each assignment's optimization challenges. The two green lights next to each button in the elevator will tell you how you're doing. That's what I thought. I saw the two little green lights, and I'm like, oh, that's probably which, which ones I've succeeded at. Is there anything in life more thrilling than self-improvement? For each thing in the inbox, multiply it by eight, and then put the results in the outbox. Okay. Using a bunch of add commands is easy, but wasteful. Can you do it using only three add commands? Well... One plus itself is times two. That plus itself is times four. That plus itself is times eight. So that's what they're going for. So inbox, copy to zero. Then add zero. Copy that to one, add one, copy two, two, add two. Outbox, jump. That should take care of it. Otherwise you'd have to do eight add commands, but here I only do three add commands. And eight times three is 24, yep, so that should be correct. Boom. I seem to be on the right track with this. I get you, game. I understand what you're going for. Oh, wow. Apparently I did a good job. 
sub hallway. So many years. Subtraction? I never learned that in school. Did you? We're a good team. <laughs> if I have six apples and you take two apples away, what do we have? Yes, a workplace theft incident. <laughs> okay. All right. Why not? Uh, for each two things in the inbox, first subtract the first from the second, then put the result in the outbox, and then subtract the second from the first and put the result in the outbox. Repeat. Shit. Okay. <coughs> Trying to look at the commands here. Subtract the first from the second. Put the result in the outbox, then subtract the second from the first and put the in the outbox. Okay, so I get like the first part is like, you know, inbox, then copy two, one. They said first and second, so I'm going with one and two to make it less confusing. Then inbox, copy two, two. Like that's how I'd set up the two basics. All right, then copy from is how you'd get the number. Okay, so I currently, let's see, subtract the first one from the second one, so I want to have two and then subtract one. I currently have two in my hand, so now I want to subtract one, and then go out box, then copy from one, and subtract two, and send that to the out box, and then jump back to the beginning. Got it? We good? Question is whether subtract works the way I think it does. I think we're do we're we're right we're good, right? Were those all right or all wrong? They were all right, okay. I was Slightly worried I'm, I might have to second guess the order of operations for subtraction as far as which one was going to be subtracted from which one as far as uh, The command goes, but no it worked exactly how I thought it would so we're good Petra Contiplier we're just saying words now What a wonderful feeling when all of your work over the last few years all comes together and culminates in a well-executed assignment for each thing in the inbox, multiply it by 40 and put the result in the outbox. Damn. That's a lot of times of, of, of doing the thing. Okay. So how are we gonna do- okay, so... I'm trying to just think of like how we're gonna do this mathematically. Uh, so for, you'd start with inbox, then copy to zero. The issue here is 40 doesn't add up very well. So, 1 times 2 times 4 times 8 times 16. We could do times 2. Times... Uh, let's see here. In order to get to 40, the previous tile could be 20? Which you'd get to from... 16 plus 4. I guess, yeah. Okay, so... Copy to zero. Add zero. We currently have times two. Copy to one. So this is times two. I'm gonna need four and 16, basically, to get there. I mean, you could do it a number of ways, but uh, yeah. Times one, one, two, 
All right, the 40 doesn't have to be on the board. I just need to get there. So, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. That is fine, actually. Okay, so... Uh, let's just do the normal sequence, then. Copy 2, 2, add 2. Copy 2, 3, add 3. Copy 2, 4. Alright, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So, now I need 16 times 2 and 8. So, copy... No. We currently have 4, which is the time 16. It's ho I'm holding it at that point. So let's add another one of it. Then add the 8. And then go to Outbox. There we go. Taking me back to programming classes. And if I'm doing this correctly, he should end up with a value of 80 here. Ta-da! There we go. Little, little did I know, I didn't even have to question it that much because we already had the exact number of tiles available. Really, that's the optimum solution, huh? It might just be because they committed to always having that stuff around. Let's get to the next coffee break before I cut it, before I give it a break. Equalization room. Sometimes, some numbers are bigger than other numbers. And sometimes, they are the same. How can we know? I read about that here in this great book, Which Number Are You? For the Aspirational Zero. You can borrow it later. Get two things from the inbox. If they are equal, put one of them in the outbox. Discard non-equal pairs. Repeat. Put one of them in the outbox. Which one? Either of them. Who cares, apparently. Oh look, Hello World is here. Get out of here. There we go. Gross. So I can use that to write notes in my program. We can annotate our notes. We're reaching the point where the programs are potentially complicated enough that we need to be able to have a comments on them, just like in real programming. You got comments. You can use them if you like to make uh, mark sections of your of your program. Oh, you draw it. Okay. Yeah, it's a bad one. There we go. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So, inbox. Copy to zero. Inbox. I probably don't need. I probably don't need an extra one. If two things are uh, get two things in the inbox, if they are equal, put one of them in the outbox. Discard non-equal pairs. Oh, I haven't. I have not been given any kind of comparison tool. Okay, so copy to one, and I'm gonna have to use a jump if zero function here, basically. Uh, let's see. If they are equal, put... Oh right, if they're equal, put one in the outbox. It doesn't matter which one because they're equal. That was a stupid thing to point out. Okay. So... If they're equal, put one of them in the outbox. Okay, so... I'm gonna put a jump function that makes it reset at that point. Oh, I, oh crap, I have to actually compare them still. Uh, I actually don't need to copy it to one. I just need to compare them. And if they're if they are equal, I'm putting one in the outbox. I can just pick up zero again. So it, it doesn't matter if I re if I maintain the one at that point. Otherwise, I just discard them. Okay. So go go to inbox, copy one of them to zero. Go to the inbox, and then we're going to subtract zero. And then if what we get as a result is zero, we're going to jump ahead to here. At which point, I will copy from zero because I need to get, I need to reget the original number. 
because we've destroyed it with the subtraction process and are currently holding zero because they were equal. So I copy from zero again and go to the out box and then we jump back to the beginning. Whereas if I, if I, otherwise in the case where it's not zero, that means they were two different numbers which are supposed to be discarded. So we, we grab inbox, copy to zero, grab inbox, subtract zero, we get something that's we get something that's non-zero as a result. So then we just loop back, which means we discard the stuff in the process and, and start again. And here, if it is zero, it, it skips past that jump with an, with its own jump, which let, lets us pick the item back up again, then take it to the out box, and then it loops back. Yeah, this should be totally acceptable, right? So this should give us a one, and we're gonna throw it away. So we're like, the hell, no. But then we're gonna get, oh three and three. Those are equal to each other, aren't they? That gives us a zero. Oh shit, better pick that up and throw it in the outbox. Boom. Perfect. I'm the best programmer that's ever lived. And there's definitely not anyone tearing their hair out in the comments right now. In fact, the comments really behave themselves when I play programming games and don't uh, complain constantly or anything about how stupid I am. That's never happened in the programming games when I play do less tries of them. That's never happened ever. There's been a change of plans. The accounting department has determined that treating all numbers equally is no longer profitable. Management wants the big numbers only. Ooh. Grab two things from the inbox and put only the bigger of the two on the outbox. If they are equal, just pick one. Repeat. Okay. Oh, jump if negative is the new thing. Okay. You got a new command. Jumps only if the thing you're holding is negative, less than zero. Otherwise, continues to the next line. Okay. So, inbox, copy to zero, inbox, copy to one, there we go. So I've, got, I've got both numbers out, so they're preserved and safe. Now let's uh, subtract zero from one. So, if we're gonna do jump, we're gonna have to do jump if negative. So if it is negative, we're gonna have to jump to a place later on. Uh, so let's, let's figure out what to do with negative. Uh, at this point, I, I have one and I've subtracted zero. So that means if it is negative, that means the zero is the big one, which means we need to copy from zero and take it to the out box. And then jump back to the beginning. Boink. Uh, but if it's not, if it is not negative, meaning it's equal, either it either is zero or it's not, uh, they're either equal or the one in, z or, uh, or one is bigger, that means we want to copy from, uh, one and take that to the outbox. And then jump back to the beginning. I think I did this right. I think I did. But only one way to know, you hit that compile button and then JavaScript's like, start the semester over, asshole. And then you leave and you go to geology because you realize maybe JavaScript programming isn't for you. And you should look at rocks instead. That'll be fun. I think I did it right. Yeah. I'm a regular old genius. Yeah, the maximization room. Or I only pick the maximum things. Oh, I suck. I suck and I'm stupid and I fucked it all up. No. Aw. But at least we get a cutscene. Employee morale. And that, ladies, is how I saved a bundle on my long distance telephone service. <laughs> Are we suggesting that the whole reason for why I'm doing everything by hand all these years, this poor man, is because the machines revolted against us already and we decided to maintain all of our factories and stuff without said machines? I think that's what we're going for. Alright, well, that's a good place to cut it, I think. Thanks for watching, like always, guys. This has been Human Resource Machine. 
the third game from this particular group or style or whatever. I don't know what to call it. It's, this, it's the second Tomorrow Corp game, but I mean, it's weird not to count uh, World of Goo since some of the same people made it and it's the same graphical style and so on. Uh, thanks for watching like always. Check out the link in the description if you want to try, try the game out for yourself. There's a link to the Steam page. I think it's also... It might be on more platforms too. Uh, they also just came out with a game called Seven Billion Humans, which I think is also a programmy type game. Uh, I don't have a code for that though at the moment, so I won't be playing that tomorrow. Maybe someday in the future they'll get back to me or something. But uh, thanks for watching like always guys, and I'll see you next time.